Good morning, everyone. My name is Graham Croker. I've worked at Scion uh, since about 2000 uh, on behalf of forest growers in the nutrition area. Um, today, I'd like to present uh, on uh, micronutrients. Micronutrients how they might improve forest growth. Uh, micronutrients found in very small quantities, um, compared with soil nitrogen, which is about 2,300 parts per million. Micronutrients are found at less than 100 parts per million generally. Uh, examples are the copper, zinc, boron, molybdenum, cobalt, manganese. Micronutrients in use today, uh, forest growers treat 150,000 hectares of radiate a year with copper, copper being a micronutrient. You can see on the image on the right hand side, Back in 2008, so the distribution and abundance of dothostroma treated areas. Uh, boron is another micronutrient we apply to mitigate deficiency. More often, we believe it's related to uh, managing crop stress. So the question is, what other micronutrients should we be using? So more on the copper story, there's some evidence for widespread copper limitations. Here we looked at a genetics by environment trial series across uh, diverse environments in New Zealand. And we generally showed that most sites were probably deficient in foliage copper levels. So a couple of sites there were obviously treated with copper spray. And so they were a good indicator of um, some of the issues that might be underlying forest crops. Micronutrients uh, have a very small uh, range in deficient areas compared to adequate and toxic zone, compared to macronutrients. You can see on the right hand table there that the parts per million for copper ranges in the deficient area of about two parts per million. And we've shown adequate as a four or optimal was about 5.4. And so just applying treatments of micronutrients is a little bit more difficult because you've got to get the treatments right. So one of the really interesting things or challenging things about micronutrients, also that they are involved in the biological processes. Here we've got an image of the periodic table. You can see that a lot of these micronutrients are associated with uh, cofactors or enzymes or genases that are complex compounds driving growth you know, at process level. And so that's quite unique. In terms of a history of forest nutrition. So sort of, it sort of developed after identification of second rotation deficiencies. They looked at the macronutrients of NMP, copper, potassium, magnesium ratio can be concerned. So sort of, as we get closer to 2025, we're tending to head towards these micronutrients and other enzymes that we might be able to manipulate on forest growers' behalf. Here's an example of nitrogen fixation process that is um, influenced you know, as one of these important biological processes. And that's important to forest growers because uh, symbiotic nitrogen fixation is one of the most promising and immediate alternatives. You know, over in Europe, they're already restricting how much nitrogen could be applied. And so we're looking for alternative ways to enhance the natural site uh, nitrogen levels. Wood quality, it's another way that we can influence 
uh, lignification processes using micronutrients. There's a um, complex compound called superoxide dismutase, which is a catalyst. Its function is to scavenge free radicals produced by plant stress. Generally, there are three types the copper zinc combination, there's a manganese, and there's an iron combination. So, if we applied a treatment using these micronutrients, copper, zinc, manganese, or iron, we might be able to mitigate crop stress and improve control over lignification processes in Radiana. Also, there are some options around uh, manganese, which seems to provide an essential catalyst function in photosynthesis to split water for plant energy. So, an important hypothesis that we'll be following is manganese plus calcium as a treatment could improve water efficiency of forests. And that's going to become more important as we head into climate change influences. So a lot of these micronutrients um, are complex and they're reasonably well studied in the international literature. Here we've got an example of boron and as recently as 2008, there's a quite a controversial uh, view posed and there's been a lot of discussion whether boron is a central element or related to toxicity in the cell walls and, and reducing stress in other ways. And so, you know, we're, we're still at the cutting edge of a lot of the science and it's developing over time. So the key for us as forest growers is to improve micronutrient monitoring. You know, this is going to allow us to understand effects in the future. And some growers need to include more of these analyses of micronutrients. Micronutrients accelerate biological growth, growth processes. And we have identified some promising treatment options in our view. And so we'll be, we think this is worth exploring more behalf of forest girls in the future. Thank you very much for your time.